Good morning. Thank you for being here for today's heart presentation. Please, as always, take a moment to silence your cell phone and put it away so you can give your undivided attention to our speaker. Introducing today's presenter is North Cross Alum, Union Lee. Two years ago, I was standing in James's position while he was introducing me. And it is a full circle moment to have it be the other way around today. James has always had an interest in politics and music, so it does not surprise me that he chose this topic. James always walks around the house with one earbud in and always has to play his music while we drive in the car. He is always suggesting new songs and ridiculing me on my music taste of Taylor Swift. <laughs> Sometimes I hear the songs he plays and I tell him that I don't like it and to change it. Nine times out of ten, his response is to listen to the words and not just the beat, because the weight behind the words has so much more meaning. And although sometimes I roll my eyes, he is right. Most songs tell a story, and sometimes we are just stuck on, on the beat of the song and not the message. He has been more curious of the story the artist tells rather than how it sounds. So here to talk to you more about it today is my brother, James. Well, most people listen to music daily. Very few people understand the stories hidden behind the lyrics. Throughout history, songs have been used for political reasons all the time. This trend is seen from artists all the way from Russia to Zimbabwe. While music is first and foremost meant to be enjoyable, this does not stop it from pushing a political agenda. We will look at five different examples. First, of how music can evoke patriotic feelings in Argentina. Then, how mainstream music can criticize and bring attention to political issues in the United Kingdom. Next, how music can be seen as a way to feed the fire for ongoing political events in Zimbabwe. Then, we will look at how some governments try and suppress musicians in Russia. And lastly, we will look at how music challenges and overcomes social norms in the United States. An example of a song used to evoke patriotic feelings is national anthems. Most national anthems are either marches or hymns most commonly in the national language of the country. The first national anthem was for the Netherlands. It was written between 1568 and 1572 during the Dutch Revolt to inspire citizens, although it was not officially adopted until 1932. The point of a national anthem is to inspire citizens to take pride in their country and invoke patriotism. Many of them use strong language about how great the country is, emphasizing an important moment in history to reflect the country's ideals and beliefs. An obvious example of this would be the Star Spangled Banner, but is relevant in many other anthems as well. One of the most interesting anthems is the Argentinian anthem. The first Argentinian anthem was created in 1810 and had nothing to do with Argentina. The poem by Esteban de Luca and Vanas Panera were written about the French defeating the Spanish in the Peninsula War. Three years later, on May 11, 1813, a new, more fitting anthem was created by Vincent Lopez y Plains. This date would go on to be known as Anthem Day in Argentina. The meaning of the Argentinian anthem is about them gaining freedom from the Spanish, while the lines translated mean, here mortals, they are scared cry, freedom, freedom, freedom. The anthem continues this theme throughout the entire song. This is another example of an anthem taking an important moment in history, in this case, the Argentinians gaining independence from the Spanish, and how that reflects their ideals as a nation and views it as a bias for the national anthem. An example of how mainstream music can criticize and bring attention to political issues is seen in the most important band of all time, the Beatles. They were founded in Liverpool, England around 1960. While they are mainly known for their outstanding production, creative lyrics, and unique sound that came to define the 60s and 70s, they also have a lot to say in many other songs. The band comments on upper class England at the time in the song Piggies, off their 1968 album, White Album. The band takes a jab at the English economic system within the song Tax Man off their 1966 album Revolver. The song Piggies is one of the strangest songs in the Beatles catalog, which is saying a lot coming from the Beatles. Before a word is said, you can already get a good idea of what the song is about based on the instruments used. It starts with the use of string instruments, an almost a medieval tune akin to what many people believe royalty would play in the dark ages. 
From this, the listener can infer that that the relation of the song has to do with the upper class of European society or royalty. When the lyrics start, they are quite strange, repeating references to smaller and bigger piggies. The small piggies are meant to represent the lower and middle class of England, where the bigger piggies are representing the upper class. The song goes on to claim that smaller piggies are wallowing in the dirt, while the bigger piggies are stirring up the dirt, yet always have clean shirts. This is a commentary on how the upper class can mess up the economy, leaving the middle and lower classes to deal with the consequences. By the bigger piggies having clean shirts, it means that while the upper class caused the problems, they did not deal with the issues, therefore are clean. While many other interpretations are thought of, including a very popular one, believing as a commentary on the police at the time, mainly due to the use of the word pig, the class interpretation of the song was later confirmed by the writer George Harrison. He also confirmed that the song was heavily influenced by the classic 1945 book Animal Farm. An obvious link would be the use of a pig to represent beliefs in both the song and the book, but the messages are also similar. Both of the song and the book preach a message of the damages of social class and inequality. The message behind the song Tax Man is probably the Beatles' most blatant criticism of England. While most Beatles songs are cryptic, requiring some sort of thought to figure out what they have said, it is almost impossible to miss the point of tax name. <laughs> Indicated by the title, the song is basically a large rant on taxes. The song takes place from the perspective of the tax man who is claiming everything he is taxing. With lyrics such as, let me tell you how it will be, that's one for you, 19 for me, and if you get cold, I'll tax the heat, if you take a walk, I'll tax your heat. It is very obvious they are not fond of the tax system. While exaggerating, the song does hold valid complaints about how heavily, heavily and frequently they are being taxed for being in the top 10% bracket of England at the time. While many argue the taxing is served due to the amount of money they were bringing in, according to the book Beatles Anthology, once they wanted to give a gift of £615,000. But in order to do that, they would have to be earning around £6,150,000. It is understandable to be angry at a system that is not allowing you to give a gift because of your tax bracket. They also expressed concerns about where all their money was going, believing it was not going into civil service and public goods, but instead going to military spending and paying back their debts. While the Beatles are not necessarily a political band, that do provide important criticisms. This commentary on the upper class and piggies is important because it is bringing attention to an unfair system. The same can be said about tax pointing out the ridiculous tax system at the time. While many believe musicians just diagnose issues and do not do anything about them, they are spreading their message to millions of people across the world, raising awareness for the problem, which is the first step in solving the problem. An example of how music can be used to feed the fire in ongoing political events is the Zimbabwean band Wells Fargo. While the Beatles were a band that infused criticism within their lyrics, I would not consider most of their music politically motivated. Wells Fargo, on the other hand, was born from the Zimbabwean War of Independence in the 1970s. The war was between three parties, the unrecognized Rhodesian white minority-led military group, the Socialist Zimbabwe African National Union, and the Marxist Zimbabwe African People's Union. The band was formed by M. H. Talmo, who took the band name from an American cowboy comic, not the band. <laughs> the band mainly played politically motivated songs revolving around the revolution, particularly the single Watch Out. This single will put them on the map, gaining global attention purely off the quality of the song. The single Watch Out is almost a warning of the sorts to the Rhodesian government who watch out for the revolution. Song starts with the lyrics, there's thunder and rain, lightning, big storm is coming. The big storm is in reference to the rapid revolution overcoming the country. Next, the chorus echoes this sentiment, repeating the lyrics, watch out, big storm is coming, there's thunder and lightning, you better hold on. This is further hammering in the point, the revolution is coming, and the government needs to hold on, has to not get blown away. While the song is simple, it is compelling and effective, and gets the point across very well. While the song itself is pleasant to listen to, the more important impact of the song was its use in the revolution. The revolution. The song became an anthem of the sorts for the with its strong anti-Rhodesian government sentiment. The song was widely used by both Socialist Zimbabwe African National Union 
and the Marxist Zimbabwe African People's Union. Because of the controversial nature of the song and its use, the band was hunted down and beaten by the Rhodesian military themselves. Wells Fargo was known more as a live band of the 70s, becoming extremely popular within Rhodesia and other neighboring countries. Despite the beatings and numerous threats from the government, they continued to play until after the war. Later in the 70s, they would start to add more disco, punk, and reggae elements into their music because rock had become, had become seen by Black nationalists as a distinctly white genre. Interestingly, because the band mainly performed live within an underdeveloped country, they did not have a worldwide release until 2016 when M.H. Tombo worked with California label of Navigate Records to release the songs. While the recorded discography is small, only telling around 20 songs, they are truly powerful and impactful. Government suppression of music is nothing new. Bars were very influential throughout the medieval era and encouraged peasants who were facing hardships during the Dark Ages. The practice became regarded as rebellious and degenerate by the nobles because of this. Many laws were passed restricting the rights and privileges of these bars, which caused them to die out. A modern day example of this would be Russia's blacklist. There are around 30 brand groups of musicians who are blacklisted, with many being deemed as foreign agents. This blacklist has been growing rapidly since the Russian Ukraine war, with many more musicians speaking out against the war and getting a band. One of the most prominent members of this group would be rap artist Noise MC. Noise MC is actively involved in Russian politics, showing support for political prisoners, speaking out on current affairs, and usually against the government. Because of his anti-government messages, many of his concerts have been shut down and occasionally have resulted in his arrest. Despite this, he continues to spread his message within Russia and the surrounding areas. His most recent album, Exit the City, released in 2022, he explores themes of freedom, political satire, and anti-war humanitarian with a focus on the Ukraine war. An example of this off the album would be the song Voodoo, where he sings in Ukrainian. With the song, he sends a powerful message about how Russians and Ukrainians are brothers and how Russia needs to stop the war so they can talk it out. This is most visible in the lyrics, a brother does not listen to his brother, the chasm widens. The effects of these protesters and musicians can be seen in the support from Ukraine growing worldwide, with Russian forces struggling due to the support Ukraine has been receiving. Lastly, music can change and subvert social norms. The most influential American artist of this generation, Kendrick Lamar, does this with almost every project he releases. Kendrick mainly speaks of the struggles of growing up in poverty and how he corrupt, corrupt young people. One of the most significant themes across all of his work would be the backwards ideology of toxic masculinity, mainly in young African American men. In his most recent album, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, he tackles this idea head on. The album structured very strangely being split down the middle with two nine song sections. The first section of the album, Mr. Morale, describes Kendrick hiding his insecurities in different ways. Ironically, the first song is called United in Group. Kendrick repeats the lyrics, everyone reads different. The point of this is to claim that every single person copes differently, with many coping by buying useless and expensive items, substance abuse, and even violence, but never showing their true feelings. Later in the first half, he goes on to reflect this sentiment, and it is even blatantly pointed out in the beginning of the song Father Time, in which a mother like figure tells Kendrick he needs therapy, in which he refuses, believing it would make him look weak. Later in the song, he contributes this mentality to his father, instilling these values in him at a young age. This can be seen in the line A child that grew accustomed to jumping up when I scraped my knee, because if I cried about it, he'd surely tell me not to be weak. The rest of the first section builds on this until the last song, Purple Hearts where Kendrick sees the error in his ways once he sees true love in action. The first song in the second section is titled The Big Steppers. The, the first song is titled Help Me Out. On this track, he speaks of how he's going to rewrite his wrongs. This can be seen in the lyrics, one of these lives, I'm going to make things right with the wrongs I've done, that's what I reunite with the father's son until then I fight. Claiming he will rewrite his wrongs and continue to be reincarnated until he is fully repented for his sins, and only then will he reunite with the father and son in heaven. This new version of himself goes on to reflect and repent for most of the second half. Near the end, we get the most powerful song on the album, Mother I Sober. The song is all about Kendrick dealing with his being sober. By the end of the song, 
he gets completely sober and seems extremely proud of himself, claiming that he has broken a generational curse. This is most likely referring to how Kendrick had stopped running from his problems through drugs and alcohol, where his forefathers fell victim to these substances. Kendrick is breaking down a toxic culture of mother and father. The culture teaches young men that the only way to survive in the streets is by acting hard and never showing emotions. This mentality of oppressing your feelings leads to some abuse recovery. Kendrick points out the stupidity of this and how damaging the mentality can be. Reflected through the first part of the album, when Kendrick deeply believes in this mentality and it shows how harmful it is to him and to the people around him. The second half displays how Kendrick is a much happier and healthier person after opening up. The effects of someone with the influence of Kendrick promoting this message are great. Kendrick's target audience is mainly these underprivileged people who believe in this backwards ideology. By demonging it through song, millions of these people are hearing it is okay to open up. By hearing your hero say it is okay, you will be more likely to open up and discard this toxic mentality. In conclusion, music has been used for political reasons throughout history. The national anthem of Argentina is used for both patriotic feelings. The Beatles intertwined criticism of the governmental systems with enjoyable mainstream music. Wells Fargo fed the fires of revolution with their powerful anti government message. Noise MC criticizes a corrupt regime and, despite government suppression, continues to spread his message. And lastly, Kendrick Lamar challenged and overcame the social norms of toxic masculinity. Thank you. Congratulations, I want and then Thank you. Thank you.